Hello, my name is Ben Woodruff, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a short presentation about golden eagles. Uh, I made this PowerPoint for the Great Salt Lake Bird Festival that takes place here in northern Utah every May. If you live in or near Utah, I highly recommend you check it out, the Great Salt Lake Bird Festival. There's a lot of fun presentations like this. Uh, golden eagles are very near and dear to my heart. I've been working with them in many different capacities for uh, a couple of decades now. Golden Eagles are intelligent, they're powerful, they're inspiring. I've worked with them as a falconer, I've worked with them as a wildlife educator and assisting in wildlife rehabilitation. So I want to share some of the knowledge and perspectives I've gained over the years uh, working with these incredible, incredible birds. So Golden Eagles, when we hear the word gold, we look at them and we say, well, they look brown to me. Well, Golden Eagles are related to a host of other very closely related eagles like the tawny eagle and the steppe eagle many eagles that look similar and what sets the golden eagle apart are that it has hackle feathers on the back of its head that turn sort of a shiny gold the older it gets that's where it gets its name now the golden eagle is considered to be the most successful and widespread eagle species on our planet and if we take a look at a map really they've dominated the northern hemisphere everything you see in that uh, darker blue there that is the golden eagles traditional range but uh, depending on taxonomic classification uh, you could say that the golden eagle has an even bigger range if we go this way you see that in red there's a couple of other eagle species that came from golden eagles that are so close that they can even interbreed in captivity the first of these is the Varroa's eagle of Africa, southern Africa. This basically just looks like a black golden eagle. It has a white patch on its back, but this black version of a golden eagle hunts a rock hyrax. This is a mammal species that it hunts and that it's very famous for because the rock hyrax, believe it or not, is a living relative of elephants. Now the other one is the wedge-tailed eagle of Australia. If you take a look at this bird, it does look like a, a redder version of a golden eagle. Now, it's it did come from golden eagles genetically, but it's been in Australia long enough that, of course, its primary prey are rabbits. So it's uh, it's built a little bit different. Its head has fewer feathers so that it can dissipate heat in the extremes of Australia. And it's grown a longer and wedge-shaped tail that gives it a bit more maneuverability. Now, something interesting about these wedge-tailed eagles, uh, they, they had a lot of persecution in the past hundred years and been shot, uh, encouraged, people have tried to shoot them. And amazingly, their numbers have not been decimated because of something unfortunate. Humans brought rabbits to Australia, and uh, with no direct competition, rabbits have gone out of control in many regions. So rabbits are easier to catch than kangaroos for these eagles, and they've made that switch. So they're able to, to hunt and hunt and hunt as much as they want, and now, of course, they're protected and no longer hunted in Australia, but it's one of the few times when there was an active campaign to eradicate a species uh, of top avian predator and that they survived and are doing well now. And again, the, the red kangaroo is the largest marsupial in Australia. And if you can imagine a wedge-tailed eagle hunting something this large, it takes a lot of power, but a lot of maneuverability as well. Now, this is an interesting picture. In Europe, uh, in captivity, like I mentioned earlier, wedge-tailed eagles and golden eagles have been uh, have crossbred on their own. So it's they're that closely related, and some people might consider them a subspecies of each other then. But taxonomically, they are technically a different species. So I want to talk a little bit about some of my experiences with golden eagles here in northern Utah. Uh, northern Utah has a lot of mountains and it has a lot of open uh, basin type deserts where we don't have a lot of rivers and the water does not drain to the ocean. So there's these dry areas with a lot of short grass and a lot of sagebrush. And uh, the golden eagles thrive in these areas. Now, golden eagles, we start to uh, see them being more bonded and more paired up in January and February, a male and a female, they do mate for life. We typically find that in the wild that life is around 27 to 30 years. Uh, after that, typically they get osteoporosis and in a, in a nature where survival of the fittest is the rule, if you have harsh osteoporosis, then 
you're not the fittest, and they often just get pushed out by a younger eagle out of their prime hunting territory and can't find food and die. In captivity, we see them living uh, another decade or so longer with a guaranteed meal. Well, this is the end of part one of this PowerPoint. Please check out part two to see the rest of this presentation.